already up the view. Oh, oh my goodness, oh. Cole. All three, and it goes 15 1. Sick play. Two teams of players battling it out for their fans, for their reputations, and for the glory that comes with victory. This won't be an unfamiliar concept to you, but instead of shooting hoops or scoring goals, these athletes do something a little different. They play video games. Welcome to the world of eSports. It's the multi-million dollar competitive gaming industry you've probably never even heard about. But the sport that shows players fighting on their favourite video games already rivals that of established sports of like football and golf and rugby in terms of prize money and viewership. Every year millions of people tune in to watch their favourite players battle it out for a championship, whether it's from the comfort of their homes or live in a stadium. From their commentators analysing amazing plays to the exciting, pressurised atmosphere that fans create. There's a special intensity that comes from watching people play the games you know and love. For the professional players themselves, gaming is a way of life and a career. One that could potentially make them millions. And in the heat of the moment, with rooting fans watching from all the way around the globe, any strategic decision they could make could possibly catapult them into fame and glory. What better defeat? This is competitive gaming. For many, gaming is nothing more than a hobby, a brief escape from reality. But in places like South Korea, promising new individuals are competing in tournaments with prize money worth millions of dollars. For the successful, the life of a global superstar awaits. This life will include things like team sign-ups, brand deals, and signing autographs for millions of fans. But the road in fame and fortune doesn't come easy. To prove they have what it takes, players must train for about 8 to 14 hours today, honing their mechanical skills and their analytical skills. They spend almost every waking moment of their lives going over their skills in the video game and talking with the game coordinators and, and coaches about how to best approach the next one. The pressure on these young people can be immense, but if you do go through it, the prize at the end is definitely worth it. Take um, Yi Han Hook, for example better known to his supporters as Faker. Often considered to be the best in the world for what he does, Faker is also is already being considered among the great of the greats in sports, just such as Michael Jordan for his amazing ability in the online game League of Legends. Though starting out from humble beginnings in 2013, Faker quickly moved his way up the ranks through determination, skill, and within about four years he became one of the world's top players. He has already made over millions and millions of US dollars in terms of prize money, and this doesn't even count the money he makes from sponsorship deals and Twitch streaming. Incomes of this size rival those of professional athletes and actors, and for good reason. Esports players put just as much effort in what they do as people in other professions. And Faker is among those who have proven themselves to be among the best of the best. A new breed of global athlete. So, we've covered the players, the people determined to make money out of video games. But the biggest problem with esports as a spectator sport is whether people actually watch it or not. Well, it turns out, quite a few people do. In 2017, a study behind the esports showed that 385 million people viewed the sport, which split up to about 191 constant viewers and 194 occasional viewers. And this is a huge number of people, especially if you consider the measly 4.5 billion population of New Zealand. And the statistic follows the trend of the past couple of years. Then by 2020, it is expected that the viewership will grow in 200 million, making the total 585 million. To give you an example of the numbers, the 2016 League of Legends World Championship was watched by 43 million people and, by the way, had a cash prize of over 7 million New Zealand dollars. There's something for everyone in the esports industry. From shooting games, to fighting games, to strategy games, to sport and racing games, to MOBAs, and even to card games. But what perhaps is the most fascinating and surprising thing about the esports industry is uh, a study done into the esports countries found that 
about 42% of people don't actually play the games that they watch. As strange as it may sound, game developers have already taken advantage of this fact and realised that a game present in the esports industry brings in a whole lot more money due to the attention that it grabs. With the aim of appealing to current fans and reaching out to new ones, next generation games are constantly being made by game developers, with the intention of each one be trying to become the next esports gaming hit. So, back to the economy of esports as a whole. In 2017, the industry is already expected to be worth a huge 925 million, which is a huge increase by 40% from previous years. Different brands and companies will be investing a total of $725 million into this industry, divided into around $250 million of advertising, $375 million of sponsorship deals, and a further $135 million on media rights, which are the rights to show esports content on the channel. This brand investment, which is comprised of sponsorship deals, media rights, and advertising, is expected to double by 2020. In addition to this, game developers, which we touched on before, will be investing a further $165 million through partnerships with event organisers. As for the spectators themselves, well, their spending is expected to go up to about $89 million, which of course comprises through event tickets and merchandise. Keep in mind that none of these statistics include money made through betting, which could potentially be even bigger than the esports economy. So watching other people play video games, that's esports for you. And whether you like it or not, this industry is only going to get bigger. As technology improves and better games come out, the industry that involves people gaming for a living is only going to go upwards. And keep in mind that being a player isn't the only way to make money in this world. The esports industry offers opportunities of both economically and in the entertainment industry and for business and advertising and many other avenues. So what do you think? Do you accept and approve of this new industry? Would you even consider becoming a professional player yourself? But I suppose that question is kind of irrelevant. I think the biggest question is, would you watch the video games? In addition wait, to wait, hold on. Can you move over a little bit to your right? That's good. Yeah. With the aim of appealing to current fans, 